Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to take a look at the use ref hook in React. Hooks allow us to do things with functional components that normally we would do with class-based components. In a nutshell, what use ref allows us to do is get a reference to a DOM element. Now typically we don't work this way in React, because React takes a declarative approach to manipulating the DOM. Use ref allows us to work with DOM elements in an imperative way. And because of this, there are a few special use cases for using the useRef hook. If we go to the docs on reactjs.org, they detail a few good use cases for refs. Here they say managing focus, text selection, or media playback, triggering imperative animations, integrating with third-party DOM libraries. In this video, I'm going to show an example of using useRef for media playback, in particular, playing an audio file. Before we go any further though, let's talk a little bit more about this idea of declarative versus imperative. The traditional approach, or maybe old school approach to manipulating the DOM, is doing so imperatively. So for example, if we have a DOM element, let's say an input, and we want to get access to that input, in our JavaScript we would do something like document.getElementById, for example, to first grab the element, and then we could do something in our JavaScript code like adding an event listener. And this event listener can respond to something like a change event in the input field. Or we might actually go ahead and create a DOM element in JavaScript, doing something like create element h1, for example, or create element input, and assigning it to a variable and working with that variable in different ways. And this is all the imperative approach. We give step-by-step -step instructions in our JavaScript in order to work with and manipulate the DOM. But like I said, React takes the declarative approach. So in this way, what happens in the DOM, or what gets rendered in the DOM, is a result of the state. So in React, whenever the state changes, the component automatically gets re-rendered. And this is why, as you can see in the docs, React tells us to avoid using refs for anything that can be done declaratively. But as I say, there are a few good use cases for refs. The typical example that you often see in tutorials is where we want to give focus to an input field, for example. We're going to get into an example here, though, in a second, which has to do with media playback. So it has to do with controlling the playback of an audio file. So let's get into it and see how we can use the useRef hook in React. So here I am in React in my app.js file. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually pull in the useRef hook. So in our curly brackets, we pull in useRef from React. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in my audio file. I have an audio file here in my folder called track1.mp3. I'm going to go ahead and pull that in right now. And in React, we pull in audio files like this. We go import, then we create a variable name. I'm going to call it track1. Import track1 from dot slash track1.mp3, which is my file here. So now in my component, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create an audio tag, an HTML5 audio tag, like this. And this is a self-closing audio tag. And we need to give it a source attribute and point the source to that track one that we imported. And for the moment, I'm going to give it the controls attribute as well, because I want to see some start and stop controls in the browser. So let's go ahead and flip over to the browser and see if we have access to this audio track right now. So here it is, the audio track. And let's go ahead and give it a play for a second, just to make sure that it's working correctly. This is one of my own tracks here. I'll just play a second of it. Cool, so we verified that it's working. Let's flip back over to VS Code. Now, if we wanted to present the user with these controls, this would be just fine, the way that we're doing it now. They could start and stop the track and control the volume level, etc. But let's say that we wanted to control the starting and stopping and so on of the audio ourselves in the code. I was actually working on an application recently, which is an ear training application, in which I wanted to control when the audio played and when it stopped, for example. And I wanted to do this in the code rather than having it be something that the user would control. So let's get rid of the controls attribute because we're not going to be using that. 
And this is where we're going to use our useRef hook. So the ref in useRef stands for reference. And essentially what we're doing is we're trying to get a reference to a DOM element or a DOM node. In this case, we want to get reference to this audio tag. So we'll come in here into our function app and we'll say use ref. And to start off, we're going to initialize it with a value. We're going to initialize it with null here. And we'll go ahead and assign this to a const. Let's call it audio ref. So const audio ref equals use ref passing in null as the initialized value. And then what we want to do is we want to come into the actual DOM element here, the audio tag and create a connection between this audio tag and the audio ref that we created. So we do that using a ref attribute like this and we assign it to that audio ref that we created here. So at this point, we've basically set up our ref. What we're trying to do is we want to start and stop the playback of this track one here. So we're using an audio ref to give us access to the source in this audio tag. Let's take a second right now and console.log out this audio ref. Let's save and check out the console in the browser and see what we have so far. So here in the console, we see that we have an object with a property called current and it's set to null. So let's take a look at what this is all about. As far as the null value goes, this makes sense because we did pass in null when we initialized use ref, but what's this current property? Well, the current property is the property on the ref that we want to use in order to work with our audio track. But in order to do that, we're actually going to need to bring in use effect into this functional component. Remember, we can use use effect in the same way that we would use componented mount in a class-based component. And the reason we want to do that is because we need this component to render and mount before this audio ref here will actually give us access to this audio tag. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call it use effect. And in here we pass in a callback function. We know that we only want this to happen on componented mount. So here, the second argument, which is the dependency array, we're just going to leave that empty. And now within use effect, we can get access to the audio ref, which actually is going to point to this audio tag with its source being track one. And because we have access to that here, we can call the play method on it and start playback of the audio. And remember, like I said, we do everything on the current property of the audio ref or any ref for that matter. So let's go ahead and save. And we should be hearing playback of our audio right away. because our component mounted, and then we called play on the audio ref. Let's comment it out to stop playback. And just for fun, let's say that we wanted to provide the user with a way to pause the playback of this audio. Let's go ahead and create a button to do that. We'll say stop playback. And we'll use an on click here. And we'll assign that to a function that we're going to create, which we'll call handle click. Let's go ahead and define that function. And in the body of this function, let's say that whenever the user clicks on the stop playback button, we're going to use our audio ref dot current dot pause. And pause is a method that we use with an audio tag in order to stop or pause playback. So let's uncomment this here so we can hear our audio play once we save the file and then we'll go into the browser and we'll click on this stop playback button to pause the audio. Cool. So all works as expected. So in this video, we talked about the use ref hook in react and how we can use it to create references to DOM nodes 
which lets us work with them in an imperative way. And although this isn't the primary way that we work with React, it does come in handy in a few special use cases. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you next time.